Today I'm gonna show you the pattern sequencer of the new montage. First of all, it is very important to understand the functionality of the pattern sequencer and the implementation inside the performance. Here I have a completely initialized instrument. All data are initialized. That means it is like factory default version 2. I press category and here to all the presets. I select a AWM preset, but it makes no difference and press init. In this case, I have a simple performance with a simple piano sound and that's it. As soon as I press the record button here on the right side, the menu patterns opens and here you see a very important thing. Here is selected pattern number six, which is empty. And if I change to number five, four, three and two, there are some example patterns. And here you can see there is the chain symbol between the pattern and the performance. And you see, as soon as I change the pattern, you remember I initialized everything. I had an nearly empty performance and now I simply change the pattern to pattern number one and you see here a completely different sound and a different performance. As soon as I change the pattern to the preset one, number two, space is fine. I have again a completely other performance here inside. The same for number three. New York Jam Sash. Yeah, again, a completely new and changed performance. And that means it is very important to understand the pattern recalls the corresponding performance. The pattern needs the performance to play back the sounds correctly. Yeah, as soon as I change, for example, to number five out west, you see also the performance is changing to out west and I have a completely new constellation, a completely new performance. This is very important to understand. Here you see two possibilities to play the keyboard. First is keyboard control. If you play, for example, in the band and you want to play the performance as it is, for example, in split and layer combina combinations and everything what you need inside the band context, for example. The other mode is the part select mode. As soon as I change to the part select mode, you see what happens here. The cursor changes to the part as soon as I select the part here on the left side. You see here, if I change from keyboard to part select, the color is changing from green to blue. And as soon as I select a part, then I play the part only. That means here in this case, electric piano. Here in this case, I play yeah, guitar, distortion guitar. Then here next one is electric guitar. Next is organ combo. Next is pad one. Yeah? Next is the bass. Yeah? And so on and so on. That means here, in this case, part select mode is a complete different mode than keyboard mode. Okay, part select, here in this case, blue colored means this is simply the selection. Here, for example, again, the electric piano. As soon as you press shift and keyboard control, the color is changing to violet. And here you can mute every part really fast or shift part select, you can solo every part quickly. Okay, let's go back to the regular 
part select without solo. I forgot the solo function. Okay, so let's go back. Here you see one default pattern out west. And as soon as I start the pattern, you hear this is the pattern, basically four bars. And as soon as I change the sequence, another part is coming. Okay? Of the same pattern. Okay, the third one. Here in this case we have eight bars. Five, six, seven, and eight. And now I change again to number four. And you see that inside the pattern there is a connection of different tracks. And here I will show you how to find them. Press Edit Job. And here you see a matrix and this matrix shows eight scenes, what you can see here, eight scenes. And every track is connected with the scenes. That means you have the possibility to create complete arrangements. Let's check scene number five. And number six. And number seven. As you have seen, you have the possibility to create complete songs using the pattern concepts of the instrument. Let's go to another example. Here you see, as soon as I change the pattern to my ballad, the complete performance is changing. Here again and also here. I select scene number one and start the pattern. You see also the automation here on the left side. Four bars. Fourth bar, and now I change to the second scene. Let's go to the third scene. And the fourth. The fifth. And the eighth. And you see, you can create complete arrangements with the pattern. We start from scratch with a complete empty and new pattern. Here I'm still in the pattern view. I select the pattern number six, new pattern, which is basically empty, but at the moment there is still a performance loaded. I select category search and in it, and I would like to start with a drum kit. Now you see the performance is basically empty, but I would like to change, of course, the drum kit. I go to drums 
and select here the kit of my choice. Let's have a look what is here available. Um, I would say this brake kill kit is very punchy. Very good. Okay, I would like to start with this sound. Then I go to record. New pattern is already selected. I would like to record only one bar with the tempo of 118. And I would like to quantize to 16. That means 120. Okay, I start with the I start with the with the snare drum, okay? Two, three, four. Okay, here already is a snare drum. Then I go to the, I change the recording mode from replace to overdub. Now I would like to overdub other instruments. The bass drum. Right. So now I need the open hi hat. Is there another one? No. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's basically it. Let's check it again. Okay, the, the, the open hi hat is a little bit is a little bit weak. Let's just try this out. Yeah, this is good. We can we can use this as an additional punch element. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is good. So now we rename this pattern criminal. Criminal. All right. And we save this performance, all right? Here we go, store, store as new performance, but not break shield kit, but in this case, this will be my criminal performance, criminal, okay. Store pattern and performance settings, and here, we have the connection between this criminal performance and this criminal pattern, all right? Next, we select a bass sound. In this case, I would like to take a FM bass. Okay, let's listen to the bass. This is not what I'm looking for. Not bad. Ah, this is the sound. Go back. Record. Quantization is still set. We change the record length to two. And here we go. Some tweaks go to edit and note and here we can reduce the gate time a little bit of the baseline. Let's check it. Let's change it to 80%. Okay, illegal parameters because I didn't uh, select the 
measure from one to three, execute. Let's check it out. Okay, much better. And we can also change a little bit the velocity. I would like to change the velocity to absolute maximum. Let's check it. Okay, this recorded pattern is automatically connected to the first scene. Now we change to the second scene. And as you see, now the pattern is empty again. That means either I can copy some parts, what I have already recorded, or like in this case, I change a little bit. Okay, arpeggios on. Okay, we need two bars in this case, record, and here we are. You have seen, I can also delete wrong sounds or wrong notes by pressing shift and the corresponding tone on the instrument. All right. Next, the bass sound. In this case, we need eight bars, eight bars. And here we go. Baseline is okay. Now we need one more track. But first of all, let's start this performance. Oh, right, existing data, store. And now we have everything. And here on scene one is this part. And on scene two, we have this one. Okay. Now let's add a pad. Let's add a pad. All right, we go to the F to the ANX engine, to the ANX engine, and there is a very beautiful pad, I think, here in the pad choir section. Dark vintage pad. Sounds like this. And here we go. We set the length to eight bars yeah that's it and we already can start and okay that's it and let's save this performance okay so now let's check the first scene again now we have the problem that this 
third track is also sounding, but we can check, we can fix it simply like this. We mute this part and we store this first scene to this first setting. And here we can switch it off and store it again. And now you see nothing happens. Why not? Because the setting of the scene is not finished yet. You see here all the settings for the scene memory. And here we have to switch the mixing, of course, on. And basically we can also switch all the other things on. Scene number two doesn't work properly. We go to scene memory, switch everything on. And mute is off. And we save it again. And now you see the mute combination is set. That means we start with that. And we go over to the second part. We recall the third theme and again the pattern is empty, the same pattern, criminal. So and here arpeggio is on, we switch it off. All right. This time we start with the bass, eight bars. Here we go, uh, change or tweak it a little bit. We go to job and note. And here we can change again the gate time a little bit like this to 80%. Let's check it. So we go back to the recording, we select the first track. All right, let's start with the snare drum. One more time, we make, we change the recording mode to overdub again. Okay, rehearsal. Okay, here we are.
Okay, and one more. The crash. Okay, wrong note, but no problem. We can fix it easily. Let's check the pad. this performance. Finally, I inserted two additional parts to the performance, part 4 and part 5, both synthesizer sounds, here a FMX sound and a ANX sound on part 5. And these sounds are controlled by mute combinations and they are controlled by the settings of the scene memories and it sounds like this. The pattern sequencer of the new montage is really great and has so many possibilities. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.